OK, mate, let's move it to another big game. Mm. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, uh, Spurs v Newcastle. I think we're all looking forward to this one. A Spurs team that haven't won in, in five, haven't taken the lead in, in, in all those games. A Newcastle team that just come off a, a bit of a poor showing uh, at Goodison Park at Everton. So, you know, all eyes on. Was Angeball going to continue? What was Eddie Howe's team about ahead of big Champions League game on Wednesday against AC Milan? Um, I think we can quite convincingly say Ange won this one Spurs were much brighter much mm. better um, mm. and I thought a few worrying signs for Newcastle Rob I know the amount of injuries they've got and how yeah. there's no ro- you know he's not able to rotate and, and, and get but they look a little bit out, out on the feet at the moment Newcastle yeah, they do. Maybe we should start with them, Rob. There's plenty yeah. to talk about both clubs, but I yeah. think Newcastle. The only thing I would say, right, it's the fifth. I think it was the fifth game that the, the outfield players exactly the yeah, same. The fifth game, the outplayed, same team, yeah. basically, apart from the goalkeeper, mm. that, that have started. And absolutely, that's the story. It's pretty obvious to everybody. Mm. Look, you look at them, and they just not have the same intensity, and they're not the same team without that intensity. That that's kind of obvious. They've got another Champions League game coming up. Yeah. They've got to go again. It'll probably be the same team again. I know there's a couple of players coming back. Wilson's coming back. Sean Longstaff uh, was on the bench today. The only thing I would say, Rob, right, and, and maybe, you know, he has got players on the bench. It, it's not as though he couldn't mm. rest and rotate some of these players, Rob. And, and you know, what, 4-1, 3-1 against Everton. That's seven goals, seven goals conceded in two games. Is there anything on Eddie Howe here that, that, that you know, with his five, I mean, I think he uses five subs. There are yeah, five subs yeah, now for yeah, all these, yeah. these teams that mm. are getting stretched, which, which I guess helps on this. Though, though it doesn't seem to be helping because there's a million injuries that we haven't, we've not seen before. Yeah. But can Eddie Howe, could have Eddie Howe, and I, I know it's not a strong bench, yeah. um, but he could have made some rotations and changes to try and freshen it up. Do you, do you think there's anything in that? Or, or is he okay just to keep putting the same people out there when there's others... You know, um, I know some of them on the bench are coming back from injury. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know. But yeah. surely, like, you can, you, there's other players in the club that can come and play and, and try and give some a, a break of a game. Well, I think there's a sense in that players come up. Will, uh, Wilson was back on the bench and, and um, Longstaff was on the bench. So they were two players who hadn't been involved recently who were getting fit. And there's a sense, I think, that, you know, the, 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 the injuries are getting a little bit uh, better. Um I think it is an argument. Um, you know, I, I point to, to the, the argument I gave on the on the show today, and I said it from early on, Rob. And I'm not it's not making me feel any better or worse. That, that it's, I still feel as though this team can only win one way with the way that they play. And I've said from pre-season, with the amount of games they're going to have, I, I looked, Rob, in the next. Every three days, every three days, Newcastle have a game. They play AC Milan in the Champions League. They got a Premier League game. They got a League Cup game away to Chelsea, quarter final of the League Cup. They got Premier League. They got Premier League. Mm. They got Premier League up through till that's I think January the first. Every three days there is a game. I just don't think to 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 believe that you can play with that intensity, whether you're swapping players or not. I I just don't believe that you can continue to do that for the amount of games they're playing and, and think that it, it, it's going to keep going. And I don't know if Tonali was such a big loss, obviously suspended for, for so much of the season, whether mm. his control of the football might have helped them keep a little bit more possession. They're just not a team, Rob, who know how to rest in possession. They're not a team who don't always... Every time they get the ball, it's like worked into trying to create a chance. And, and, and I just feel mm. like it's mm. almost it's too much whether, whether they're changing or not mm. I think Eddie's got to find a way a bit like Klopp had to do at, at, um, at Liverpool find a way to not just be reliant on that when they are intense when it is chaotic yeah. when they're full on thunder that's, and they're brilliant at it how can we win when it's, mm. not, it's not those days yeah yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I think um, I mean the, the, the game could have been a little bit different, Rob. If uh, I think Isaac that chance early on, yeah, got in behind yeah. Tottenham. Yeah. I think Ben Davis just got a little yeah, touch on it, on took it, it away yeah. from Isaac. Um, but 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 Spurs. I mean, I mean, I gotta say, you know, you got a lot. I, I I sat watching in my in my front room today, and it's a fun watch. It's a fun watch. There's there's no there's no team, Rob, right now that plays fluid as as Tottenham Hotspur. There's almost no point doing doing a lineup because mm. there's just not. Mm. I mean, you you might as well throw the throw the names up there and put them in a list. Like here they are, here's playing. They could go anywhere. 
They could be anywhere. And anybody could show up in the box and score goals. I mean, the Udogi goal, yeah. I mean, and you, I knew you guys would break it down that way. I mean, he, he, he literally, in his head, he's not thinking about anything. I played the ball, well, I'm going to go and run through here. He's, he's, like he's, he's in a centre-forward spot at the end of it. The fluidity is like nothing we see now. And I just, I don't know also whether there's been a team ever in the Premier League era, maybe before that, that have the fluidity that Tottenham have. And I tell you, it's, 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 it's so much attacking intent that you've got to love it. And there is risk to it. Of course, there's risk to it. And, and that's, again, we're going over stuff. It's just every time you see them play, I feel like I'm repeating myself because every time you see them play, it's the same kind of stories like, wow, yeah. some of this football and so many players going forward and, and they look like conceding a lot as well. And I gotta say, you know, if I'm, a, I think the Tottenham fans must be loving it right now. Yeah. There's going to be some hammerings. There's going to be some losses. There's already, there has been, of course, over the last four or five games. But you've got to like the way that he's going to continue with it. And maybe Newcastle was a good game matchup today, given yeah. all the things we just talked about with Newcastle. But you still got to love the way that they play and, and Kulusevski playing in that midfield and, and those and new doggy and Poro playing almost like high eights, yeah. high number eights in those little pockets. It's um. It's fun to watch, mate. And, and I feel good for Richarlison as well, getting a couple of goals. Um, he'll feel better about himself. Interesting yeah. interesting kind of switch, Rob, wasn't it? It was Son on the left. Yeah, put Son on the left. And Richarlison yeah. up through the middle. Mm -hmm. I mean, Son was brilliant in that position. He assisted, he assisted the first two goals off the top of my head. I think he yeah. did. He Against gets Trippier, behind uh, Kieran Trippier, which Trippier. is a good matchup. Yeah. yeah. It's just, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in on the Spurs style and this guy and what he's doing it is different and I, and I know he's going to get backlash um, when when they get beat badly sometimes and because because mm. they will um, but right now is that is he's trying as in his word says I'm trying to build something here mate he's trying to build a team mm. that when he gets more players in maybe that'll become a little bit less you know look like conceding so much but it was another example and a, and a and, a, and, a, and probably a good time to do it when you've had a yeah. few losses, Rob, to get back on track. No, listen, everybody, we're not going to flip and fold now and, and, and go on a run or losing. We're going to do the same thing. And this is why we do it, because we, he feels, and this is the best way of, of winning games. And he, he's, he said, I, I, I'm quoting from a press conference, that he said, I just, you know, it's great that it's fun to watch, but it's the way that I believe the best way is to win games. And, um, you know, we'll see as he, as he goes on in this Premier League. Yeah, a couple of things just on that, mate. Uh, and I totally agree with, with you in terms of, of, of what we see. And, and, and he's stuck to the way he wants to, to win football games and play and be fluid and get players in those high attacking areas of the pitch. Totally get all of that. I think, uh, and I think Graham uh, Lasselle was alluding to it before the game. Uh, he did a little hit with Graham and John Champion. And he, and he, and he touched something that I, that I was thinking in terms of I totally agree with, and, and I love that this guy is standing by his beliefs and going to play the way he wants to play. And yeah. If it's successful, great. And some might say he'll get criticism. And if it isn't successful, he'll stand by it. But th there is moments in games where, and, game, and Graham used the phrase game management, which again, I'm not in love with the, the phrase, but mm. I just feel that mm. the, the, the evolution of this is sometimes just having a little structure to go back to Rob you know they've, they've been ahead in five games in their in this run when they've not won um, and they've, they've given up leads now I'm not saying to, to change your mindset change what we're going to do when we go but is there is a little triggers that say actually for, for five for five minutes here in the game let's just be this team let's have this structure let's just know where we are right now let's go again and ball time that that's something I'm, I'm wondering can he develop into the into the to the um, the system and the in the psyche of the players but it's not just going forward let's attack let's score more than the opposition every now and then we've got to be a little bit little bit protective in this league because it, it, it's so dangerous my second point Rob and and this one slightly worries me more than than the first is mm -hmm. Christian Romero is becoming a liability he just got back <laughs> in the team he's come from a three game suspension where he's had a terrible challenge he comes flying yeah. out of the back he gets the heel <laughs> of, of, of Callum Wilson could possibly yeah. could on yeah. another day with another referee in another situation could be seeing another ban his emotional control 
and yes, he gets caught up in it. Maybe it's a Spurs day and they're flying <coughs> and they're winning and he wants to win. He's a brilliant, brilliant player. He's a massive asset for the club, Rob. But he needs reining mm. in on, on that because if they're going to get to big games and you can't rely on him, if they're going to get mm. to semi-finals of Cups and Champions League one day and you can't rely on him, Rob, mm. that he wants to show he's the tough guy, there's a problem. Yeah, so... I think it's a good, I think it's a fair point on number two. The second point about Christian Romero, I think I think he he's such an aggressive player. It, it looks like he adores the the physical side of it. And you're right. Nowadays, you have got to be so careful. Um, I, I'm just I'm just trying to sort of think how the manager can affect that and how he can change. He's 25 years of age. Looking up his age here, 25 years of age. Is you know I remember Arsene Wenger always saying famously that at 23 years of age, that that's kind of what you got. The player, you, 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 that's what you got. You ain't changing too much after 23. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think right now though, Rob, and I get that, and I and I, that's why I thought the point when you said about in late uh, when it's when, it's the, when this thing matures and they're in big games. For, I, I think that's a very valid point. Right now, I think there's there's I, I, like you said, he's a really good player. He's a World Cup champion. Um, I think there's more issues, more things to address than that, but I absolutely take that on board. The first part of it, Rob, the first point you made there, and I get that, and, and that, but the only thing I would say on that, right, and, I, and again, this is just my take on it, when players have, and, and let's just say that your your idea there is to go into a, into a bit of a shell or, 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 a, or a defensive kind of mindset for five minutes or whatever, what, you, you're, saying, you're saying kind of like, okay, let's just, let's just rein it in, I think is what you said, for five or 10 minutes. The only thing I would say about that is if that's an option to the players and to the team, when did, you, you, you're giving them decisions to make about when to use that or, or are, we cap- are we free from that now? Can, can we now go and do our thing? And I know exactly why you're saying it and it's a sensible comment. I'm just trying to think of if players are given another way of playing, mm. could they like, well, hey guy, I think it's now. I think, I think now's the time when we got we to come back in and don't do that and come back here. Mm. And, do you know what I mean, Rob? Is, I do, is it, does, and I is hear it, your point. Does it get confusing? I hear your point, but I think, and, I, I, and I'm going to be respectful of both our careers, I think the modern-day player is more flexible, has a better tactical understanding than we did in the day. I mean, and let me tell you why I say this. I remember a conversation. I went and watched Chelsea training in a pre-season at UCLA, and I was talking to Thomas Tuchel and his assistant manager, and we were chatting about things, and, I, and he said to me, he's an ex-player, I think he played at, at um, he's the like guy from Liverpool, I think he might have been Liverpool reserves and played somewhere low down Wigan or somewhere in the league. Anyway, he said to me, you know the biggest difference between our era and the era of the, the guys now, he said, they're smarter, they're tactically more aware, and they do stuff on video and that. It's not all on training ground and all. And he said, it should, mm. the, the, the football of today is very different from the football of the 80s and 90s. And so all I'm saying in those situations are, let's not bunker in, because they're not a bunkering in team. I don't think they'd be very good at bunkering in. But now and then maybe, mm. can mm. Porro and Thingy come a bit deeper? Can one go and one stay? Can, you know, can Basuma in the middle of the port grow into the guy who says, come on, for Hang in here for a little bit. OK, we're good now. So you can go. You, I just think a, a mm. development of IQ, of understanding, of, of reading a game, I think these players are capable of doing that without being, thinking we're going away from, oh, I'm confused. Are we mm. playing Angel mm. or, or are we not? Mm. That, that would be yeah. my yeah. counter-argument, Rob. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, good point. It's a good point. And I think it's going to be fascinating, Rob. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, whether he does that. I think there'll be times in games, I thought there was a little moment in this game as well where, you know, sometimes you are forced back a little bit. The other team play really good. They've had, a, you know, and you do, there, there is a defensive shape that I think Spurs have without the ball. So I think there's a little bit of that. Yeah. But I suppose it's in possession where you're saying, well, let's just hang the fire a little bit. But where I think they were always going to try and do the same things. Anyway, it's something to, yeah, to, to kind of monitor going point. forward. Yeah. It, was a, yeah. it was a good day. It was a good day at the, at the, uh, the stadium, Tottenham Hospital mm-hmm. Stadium, and a really good victory and, and, and feel good for, for Richarlison and, and Son. And uh, again, the fullbacks, what they do is, is pretty remarkable. But no, it's an uh, interesting chat, Rob, and we'll, we'll keep that going yeah. as we as watch the team develop. 
Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.